Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture actually we will uh, give another characterization of this uh, length function. Uh, first I still have not defined the length function, we will define the length function and then we will see one characterization of length function. After that uh, we still have not proved that uh, this uh, closure of this uh, fundamental white chamber is the fundamental region for the action of W on E. So, both these results we will prove in this lecture. So, let us uh, recall uh, what we have done so far. So, we will just uh, set up some notation. <coughs> so, we take pi, so which is a subset of phi that that is actually a base. So, this is base of phi. So, then we actually proved that uh, uh, the simple reflections corresponding to elements of pi, uh, those simple reflections generate uh, this entire while group W. So, let us say W, this is the while group. So, this is the while group of phi. So, then by definition this is generated by all the reflections that are coming from the roots of uh, phi, but what we proved it is a theorem uh, that this is also generated by simple reflections where alpha coming from simple roots pi. This is something we already proved. In particularly uh, note that uh, since S alpha is a self, self involution, okay, it is a self inverse. So, this allows us to define what is called length function with respect to this uh, simple roots. So, what I mean by that, so given W, so given W and W, since W is actually generated by uh, these uh, simple reflections simple reflections. You can see that given W and W, you can write W as some product of simple reflections S alpha 1 etcetera S alpha t for some t. So, what we can do? We can choose t as minimal as possible and that t we actually define to be the length of W. So, the length of W will be this minimum of all such t such that this w is equal to s alpha 1 times etcetera s alpha t where this alpha i's are actually coming from pi. Okay. You take all possible expression of w in terms of product of simple reflections. So, then you choose uh, minimal t such that w is uh, the product of that t number of uh, simple reflection. Note that uh, this is possible w since capital W is generated by simple reflection S alpha and S alpha square is identity. So, w can be written as product of uh, S alpha and it inverse because S alpha is self inverse. So, you can write w as product of simple reflection. So, that is obvious. Okay. So, this length function indeed play a vital role uh, in order to understand uh, the group W and its uh, action on this uh, set of roots as well as later we will see set of weights and so on. But anyway, uh, uh, in order to understand this length function, so we need to give uh, some other characterization, so involving uh, uh, root properties. So, that is the aim of this uh, lecture. Uh, but before that uh, let us actually fix uh, some notation and terminologies. So, in case uh, if we write uh, uh, w as uh, s alpha 1 etcetera s alpha t and t is as small as possible as possible. So, then we defined length of w to be this t. So, that is the definition of t. So, then this kind of expression we call it reduced expression of w this is called reduced expression of W. So, of course, uh, the reduced expression is not unique. So, there could be various uh, reduced expressions for elements of uh, capital W. So, uh, before uh, recalling uh, the lemma that we proved in the last class that relates uh, uh, somewhat length of W and the roots that are actually positive roots that are sent to negative by action of W. So, we will actually define 
this important map uh, that from w2 plus or minus 1. So, which is called in general sign map, but anyway uh, we can also call it a determinant so, there is no issue. So, we define this uh, determinant map from w2 plus or minus 1 as w goes to determinant of w. So, note that w is a subgroup of G L of E and that means each element of W can be treated as invertible linear transformations from E to E. So, determinant of W makes sense there is no issue. So, since determinant of any reflection is minus 1 and W is generated by simple reflections, it is clear that uh, if we write W equal to S alpha 1 etcetera S alpha t maybe you can take it to be reduced expression. So, then the determinant of W is exactly equal to minus 1 power t which is minus 1 power length of W. So, in particularly determinant of W must be plus or minus 1 for all W and W. Okay. So, that is uh, immediate from the observation that we have made so far. So, now uh, this actually tells us that in case this expression that we have this is not reduced. So, then uh, we will be able to write W as a uh, product of some reflection with uh, some reduced expression and uh, that reduced expression will involve exactly length of W number of simple reflections. So, then there is a close relationship between this uh, T that is involved in this expression and the length of W that is uh, involved in the reduced expression. So, what is that close relationship? The parity of them must be same because minus 1 power t must be same as minus 1 power length of w. So, that implies that t must be congruent to length of w modulo 2. So, this is a very important observation. Sometimes this actually helps us to determine whether given reduced expression is indeed reduced or not. So, anyway we will see later uh, like how one can determine that using other characterization of length function. Uh, but before that uh, let us recall the result that we already proved. Okay. So, this is something uh, I proved in the last class. So, if you take uh, W, so write it as product of simple reflection S alpha 1 etcetera alpha t. So, in case uh, if this is not reduced, okay, let us assume this is not reduced expression. So, then we have some understanding of W of alpha t. So, we can immediately conclude that the W of alpha t must be negative. So, note that the W of alpha t must be exactly equal to S alpha 1 etcetera S alpha t minus 1 of minus alpha t as S of alpha t of alpha t is minus alpha t. So, since we have already seen this in that lemma that uh, if S alpha 1 etcetera S alpha t minus 1 of alpha t is negative, uh, then we will be able to uh, uh, reduce uh, this length. Okay. So, in particularly, so uh, if this is actually not reduced, then we concluded that W of alpha t must be uh, negative. So, that means, so this W of alpha t since we have assumed t is not equal to length of W, so this must be positive. So, since uh, this is positive, uh, you can immediately conclude that uh, S alpha 1 etcetera S alpha t minus 1 of alpha t must be uh, negative. So, that means, what we proved there exists an index a between 1 and t minus 1 such that this s alpha 1 etcetera s alpha t which is w is exactly obtained from by dropping uh, the simple reflection s alpha a and s alpha t in this expression. So, that means w can be written as uh, s alpha 1 etcetera s alpha a minus 1 s alpha a plus 1 etcetera s alpha t minus 1. So, note that what it says in case this w which is we have written s alpha 1 etcetera s alpha t this expression is not reduced then we will be able to find this index a between 1 and t minus 1 such that 
uh, we can write W as this product of this uh, uh, less number of simple reflections. So, we are dropping uh, this S alpha A and S alpha T from this uh, expression that we had for W. So, this is a very important observation this we called it as deletion property of uh, uh, this while group W. So, this is called deletion property of W. So, now uh, if this expression that has exactly T minus 2 number of uh, reflections. So, if this is again not reduced for example, length of W is not T minus 2 then again we will be able to find some indices so that we can remove them from this expression and then uh, get uh, W as product of those uh, simple reflections. So, this way we will be every time we will remove uh, 2 reflections from the expression and then we obtain finally, some reduced expressions of W. So, what it proves indeed you can start with any expressions of W. So, by removing some reflections from this uh, expression we will be able to obtain reduced expression of W. So, that is what uh, this observation tells. So, now uh, let us see uh, uh, how one can use this result to get the characterization of length function. For that let us observe the following. So, this is something we again proved last class. So, what is the observation for all alpha in pi? So, we have S alpha. So, that maps phi plus difference alpha to phi plus difference alpha. So, it actually maps any positive roots other than uh, alpha to positive root that is what this says. Note that S alpha of alpha is actually minus alpha this is negative. So, in particularly it motivates us to define what is called this N of S alpha. So, which is number of those positive roots that are sent to negative roots by S alpha. And from our earlier observation we can see that this number exactly 1 for S alpha. So, and this actually coincides with the length of S alpha. Okay. So, in indeed this is the observation that motivates us to define what is called this N of W. So, this is going to give us different characterization of length of W. What is N of W? You count all positive roots that are sent to negative by applying W. So, the cardinality of this so, the number of positive roots that are sent to negative by W. So, that will be called N of W. Then what one can prove? So, here is the lemma for W in W. So, we have exactly the length of W equal to N of W. So, we have N of W equal to length of W. So, how one proves this? One can actually proceed by induction on length W. So, proof is induction on length of W. So, we already proved the result for length of W 0 and 1. If length of W is 0 then it is clear that W must be identity. Then in that case N of W will be 0 there is no issue. And when length of W is 1 our early result says that uh, 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 a length of W is same as N of W. So, now uh, because these basic cases are done, so we assume that W is in W with length of W is at least 2. So, then in that case what we can do? We can write W as some reduced expression call it S alpha 1 etcetera S alpha t where t is length of W and this alpha is are coming from pi. So, this is the reduced expression of W. So, this is reduced expression. So, in particularly you can see that if you set alpha equal to alpha t. So, then W S alpha is going to be have length 1 less than W 
because this is reduced expression. So, if you take W s alpha then s alpha 1 etcetera s alpha t minus 1 will be reduced expression for W s alpha. So, that tells us that length of W s alpha must be exactly length of W minus 1. So, now uh, you can see that uh, from our earlier uh, lemma W of alpha that also must be negative because t is as small as possible that means t is length of w in that case w of alpha cannot be positive ok. So, that is what we observe if it is positive then using deletion property we will be able to remove two reflections from this expression, but that is not the case. So, w alpha must be negative. Now, note that if I take w of s alpha apply phi plus difference alpha. So, then we get exactly equal to w of phi plus difference alpha. So, that means the positive roots beta that are sent by sent to negative by w. So, if beta so what it says beta is positive root and beta is not equal to alpha then w of beta is negative if and only if w s alpha beta is also negative. So, that is what it says. So, this observation uh, tells us that together with this w of alpha is negative ok since w of alpha is negative. So, we have this set beta that is coming from phi plus such that w s alpha of beta is negative union alpha. So, this must be exactly equal to those beta in phi plus such that w of beta is negative ok. So, the only difference between these two sets you have to add this alpha with uh, this uh, union. So, why this is the case because w alpha is already negative. So, I alpha I need to add in this set and uh, this observation tells you that these two sets must be same. So, that means in particularly n of w s alpha must be exactly n of w minus 1 ok it is 1 less than n of w. Now, by induction you can assume that length of by induction we can see length of w s alpha is same as n of w s alpha. So, that forces that n of w minus 1 is same as length of w minus 1 then that forces that n of w is same as length of w. So, this proves the different characterization of uh, length in terms of this n of w. So, this is somewhat more practical uh, thing to check ok length of w is somewhat abstractly defined uh, function, uh, but n of w is very concrete function n of w just counts all the positive roots that are sent to negative roots. In particularly for example, if you have some expression uh, like s alpha s beta s alpha or s alpha s beta s gamma. So, it is easy to count what will be the length uh, using this characterization of n of w and this characterization is very very useful. So, this actually helps us to understand length in better way. Anyway, so like I said uh, using deletion property one can prove that uh, w must be a Coxter group and now this uh, characterization of n of w uh, length of w in terms of n of w will actually help us lot in understand many properties of this Coxter group. So, anyway we will not get into those things. So, let us stick with uh, uh, the root systems. So, as I promised uh, earlier, so we actually we are ready to we are ready to prove uh, what is the fundamental domain of uh, the action of w on e. So, as I we promised uh, we claim that the closure of the closure of the fundamental chamber the closure of the fundamental chamber C pi is the fundamental domain for the action of W on capital E. So, what is the meaning of this? So, this means so each vector, so each vector of capital E 
is W conjugate to precisely one vector in this C pi bar. So, that is what it says. Okay. So, there are two things to prove here. So, given lambda in E, so we have to prove there exists W conjugate of lambda that lies inside the C pi bar and there exists unique uh, vector that is in C pi bar that is conjugate to uh, lambda. So, that means if there is exists something else for example, if lambda mu are in C pi bar, C pi by bar and uh, w lambda is equal to mu then we need to prove that lambda must be equal to mu ok. So, let us prove this. So, first thing uh, to prove that so given lambda so this is the claim 1. So, given lambda inside capital E there exists w and w such that w lambda is in C pi bar. Okay, this proves uh, that each element of E must be conjugate to C pi bar. So, how do we un how one proves this? So, we again use this partial order that we defined on E, but we have to enlarge it little bit more to, to handle this uh, uh, real span. Okay, so, then what we do? We define the following partial order for lambda mu in capital E you define lambda greater than mu if and only if lambda minus mu now it is inside non negative real span of pi ok. So, this is we call it r plus span of pi. So, this is the set of non negative real numbers. So, earlier we had lambda greater than mu if and only if lambda minus mu that is there inside uh, z plus span of pi and that is we defined only for the roots. But anyway there is no harm in defining uh, extending that to this ok this is again very useful here. So, if given this mu what we do ok. So, let us say if uh, mu is given to us maybe I will call it lambda there is no harm. <coughs> so, there is let us say if lambda is given uh, vector. So, if lambda 0 then there is nothing to prove, but anyway there is we just assume lambda is in E. So, what we can do uh, we can look at this w orbit of lambda. So, this is a finite set. So, then we can restrict the partial order to this uh, finite set since w orbit of this lambda is a finite set it must have a maximal element with respect to this order. So, choose w lambda uh, a maximal element maximal element inside this w lambda with respect to the partial order that we have defined. So, now uh, what we claim so we set mu to be this w lambda our claim is this mu must lie inside the closure of the fundamental chamber. So, why that is true for alpha in pi we can see that s alpha of mu will be exactly mu minus twice mu alpha divided by alpha alpha alpha. So, this is inside definitely so, this implies ok. So, not this one. So, this implies uh, mu minus s alpha of mu which is twice mu alpha divided by alpha alpha alpha. So, this is definitely inside real span of this pi. So, that means either mu will be greater than s alpha of mu or s alpha of mu will be greater than mu ok. But since yeah that is depending upon uh, this uh, value of this mu alpha mu alpha either will be non negative or non positive. So, depending upon that mu will be either greater than s alpha mu or s alpha mu greater than mu, but uh, the second case cannot arise because mu is chosen to be maximal among all the w orbit of lambda. 
so that means the only the first case can arise so that forces that this mu alpha must be greater than or equal to 0 so that proves mu alpha is greater than or equal to 0 for all alpha inside pi but recall that the characterization of this c pi so c pi is defined to be those x in e such that x alpha is positive for all alpha in pi so in particularly if you compute what is the closure of the c pi you can see that this will be those x in e such that x alpha will be greater than or equal to 0 for all alpha in pi so using this characterization you can immediately see that this mu must be element of the c of pi bar okay but what is mu mu is nothing but w of lambda so that means given lambda so there exists w such that w lambda is in the c of pi bar so this proves that any element of e must be w conjugate to some element in the c of pi bar so now we will prove the uniqueness so for the uniqueness it is enough to prove the following uh, if we take so this is the climb 2 if we take lambda mu both are inside this c pi by bar and there exists w in w such that w lambda is exactly mu so then we claim that we claim that this w must be product of simple reflection product of simple reflections which fixes each one fixes each one fixes lambda again okay so in particularly we can get so this immediately implies lambda equal to mu because each reflection fixes lambda so w fixes lambda so that implies lambda equal to mu so how one proves this one can use again induction on double length of w so now if length of w is 0 then there is nothing to prove so then the result is immediate the result is immediate so now let us assume uh, the result is actually uh, true for uh, some length which is up to k so then let us prove it for k ok so for that purpose what we do we just write first uh, uh, w as product of simple reflections and then you can assume t is as small as possible that means t is length of w so this is in particularly reduced expression so this is reduced expression of w so then what we know immediately w of alpha t is actually negative so this is something we already proved so we are repeatedly using this so in particularly uh, you can see that so w of lambda is actually mu that is what given okay but both lambda mu both are inside your c of pi bar so in particularly since this w of alpha t is negative so so set alpha to be this alpha t no harm in that so now you can see that if you compute mu with w of alpha since mu is coming from c of pi bar w alpha is negative so this has to be non positive number so then this is exactly equal to w inverse mu of alpha but w in lambda is nothing but sorry w lambda is nothing but mu so w inverse mu must be lambda so this is going to be just lambda alpha but again lambda alpha is inside c pi of bar so that implies this must be greater than or equal to 0 so this forces that lambda alpha and mu w alpha all, all these things are 0 so in particularly if you compute s alpha of lambda so that will be exactly equal to lambda as lambda alpha is 0 so this proves that uh, w s alpha of lambda will be exactly equal to w lambda which is equal to mu but note that length of w is nothing but length of w minus 1 sorry length of w s alpha is nothing but length of w minus 1 and we also have this equation w s alpha of lambda is exactly equal to mu 
Now by induction on the length we can see that Ws alpha can be written as Ws alpha can be written as some product S beta 1 etc. S beta t minus 1 where each S beta i fixes lambda. So then this proves W can be written as S beta 1 etc. S beta t minus 1 times S alpha and each re simple reflection that appear in this reduced expression. So this is going to be reduced expression as length of W is exactly t. So each uh, simple reflection appear in this reduced expression fixes lambda. So that forces that W lambda is lambda. So that forces that lambda must be equal to mu. So this proves that each vector uh, lambda in E precisely uh, W conjugate to one element inside this C pi of bar. So in particular C pi of bar is indeed a, a fundamental domain for the action of W on capital E. So, so C becomes union of W C pi bar W in W and then we also saw that uh, given lambda in E there exist unique vector inside C pi bar intersection this W lambda. So that means so basically I what I want to say so this cardinality is 1. So that means if you are interested in understanding uh, the action of W on capital E, so it is enough to understand uh, what happens on this uh, closure of the fundamental chain. So this uh, helps us lot in order to actually understand the action of W on capital E. So we will uh, like if you are interested in exploring more about uh, uh, the while group property of W, then we have to use this action. But anyway, like we will not see those things in this lecture. Okay, uh, I will stop here because we are running out of time. So I will actually continue in the next lecture uh, with the classification of uh, uh, root system. So for that purpose, uh, first we need to see given a root system can be written as a direct sum of irreducible root systems and that will allow us to reduce our classification problem to classifying only irreducible finite root systems. And uh, we will see some ideas from graph theory and matrix theory can be used in order to def order to classify uh, this uh, finite irreducible root systems. So I, that's what we will be heading uh, in, in next couple of lectures. Okay, I will stop here. Thank you.